Salam alaikum shubhri dosha kar madhe onik shubhat cha abhinon don asker program politics and beyond day asi ami ese majom apna jane jara amader proti niyoro dekhe thakin tarar amader program er format shomonde jane aaj jara na jane tadhe jonno bolte si amader ei program ta shole amra politics and policy niye kotha bolte thakin local and national ar sheta ke lakhore ke amra kisu politician the niye si ar aske shetai hoye se aske amader je big guest niye se sen dujon tadhe ke ami introduce korte chai ar Asker program to hoyto amader English e beshi hobe karon amader guest tara they speak in English. So if I would like to introduce my first guest actually from uh, my right side, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, no one needs to know him. He is very well known figure in, in Eastern politics. Uh, he is Mr. John Biggs, GLA member City and, and East from Labour Group and he is also ex Labour leader in London Bor Borough of Tower Hamlets. So how are you John today? Oh, I'm okay, just thank you very much from, uh, from a late meeting but yeah, yeah okay. Thank you. And if I introduce my left, uh, he is he's very young politician in this area actually, he's, but he is living pretty long time, I believe, in Eastern politics. And That's right. He is standing as a uh, conservative parliamentary candidate in Bethel, Green and Bow. He is Mr. Matthew Speed. How are you, Matt, today? Very well indeed. Thank you very much for inviting me onto your show. Thanks a lot. Shubhriya Doshak, Ashwale, Amra Aske, Arek John, politician ke invite kuri silam from Tower Hamlets. First take, Amad Jain Aske, John, conservative take, John, Labour take, Asen. Unfortunately, only just just 15-20 minutes ago, she tar personal upar gota prakash kuri sen. To hoy to she thakle ar to bhala hoto. To three party take, it could be better, very good. To thikas e, we will carry on with these two parties. And as you know, we draw a quiz in every week. Actually, the last week quiz. We had last week quiz under the Local Government Act 2000. Any council with over 85k residents can adopt with which system? There will be a winner. And if I request John, as we know, every week we draw a quiz. And if you can declare a winner name from this last week quiz, please. There we go. The winner is Salma Akhtar from Hertfordshire. All right. Thank you very much, John. Salma Akhtar, thank you very much for your contribution. Our partner, Jar Agotto Shapta, has a question. Shall I ask you? Actually, it's a leader and cabinet executive, mayor and cabinet executive, mayor and council manager executive. Actually, all of them are adopted on 2001. Sorry, 2000 Local Government Act. After Purush Kajol, that's why we posted that way. Our another eight Shapta has it. This week we have another quiz. I think you can participate. Our other the number two shall be. Just right bottom corner of predictive open and she shot the email address as a PNB at channel I Europe a shop to check we should know how many councils are using the mayor and cabinet model of governance with a directly elected executive mayor in England and world that is 15 17 or 13 I'm sure one of them will be right answer after up on the author part of an and if I would like to start actually our main program and I want to start from John Okay. It's a political opinion. You can talk anything last seven days or 15 days, any political news or events that bring your attention, if you would like to, if you, if you can share with our viewers, please. Okay. Um, I think East End politics are very focused on very local matters, but obviously everyone viewing this program will be waiting for the general election to come next year. Yes. And as a warm-up for that, we've had a couple of by-elections for Parliament where this strange party, the UK Independence Party, has won two seats. They were Tory MPs, they resigned, they stood as UKIP, they got elected. It's caused a lot of excitement. Whether it will make a big yes. deal at the election is an interesting question. There's another big question, which is whether so many voters are switched off from politics because they think we're all as bad as each other, which is what a lot of people tell us on the doorsteps. Uh, my job is to try and prove people that that's rubbish. But in th one thing I need to say, you say strange for a political party. They are not strange anymore, actually. They are the political force now, honestly. As there is speculation, actually, obviously, uh, Nigel Farage, he is, uh, he is, is, is a landmark sign with a pint of beer. He was telling, okay, yeah. I am expecting 20 members okay. will be in 2015 election. Okay. How do you ignore that, his, okay. his claim? I, uh, he already think, made two already. I think you're, you're absolutely right. He's, uh, I think he's not, the opinion polls tell us that they're not massively popular. They're not going to win the government of this country which I think is good news because some of their policies are very But dodgy. they're not expecting to go on the no. country, but they're they wanna... expecting to gain a sufficient MP to hold accountable the mainstream. Yeah, um, well, uh, everyone, uh, uh, everyone talks parties. big when an election comes, and they certainly, people have got a perfect right to vote for them, and they are appealing to a section of people across the electorate. They're a lot, they've got a lot to do with a big bust-up within the Conservative Party, uh, because most of them are on the right wing of the Conservative Party, but they also are quite a populist party. 
But the one big advantage they have over the Labour Party or indeed the Conservative Party is because they're in opposition and because they've never had power, they can promise the earth. Mm. And this is a problem in, in politics. People can promise you everything if they've never done anything. And you then need to look at them in the eye and say, can you really do these things for us? And we've seen this again and again with protest parties. And UKIP is basically a protest party. Doesn't mean people don't feel very strongly. Uh, one thing you mentioned actually promise, promises. Uh, are, well, well, we know it's, it's hundreds of promises uh, uh, it's making by politicians and the parties is, is ages and ages. People are actually tired with this. As mm -hmm. you know, if you go to the step, people don't believe in politics yeah, yeah. nowadays. People don't believe in a politician. So it's not, the, it's not only, as you mentioned, it's strange. It's not strange, actually. It's, it's something fact. Yeah. People want to okay. actually okay. change and they want to see something new force. Well, I think there's a very real problem in politics, particularly with the television age. You know, we're all on television. Yeah, it's true. Which is that I sit here and I say, if you vote for me, I will do A, B, and C. And then you. he says, if you vote for me, I'll do D, E, and F as well as A, B, and C. And then I have to say, ah, he's wrong, because if he says that, then we all start arguing with each other. Yeah. I think people need to try and be more honest and promise what they can actually do and tell people what they're actually going to do. Because politicians become very unpopular if they promise things or they pretend they've done things when they haven't done things. So, do you think it's a big threat for the parties? Is it is it a threat for the Labour or a threat for the Conservative? I think it's more of a threat for the Conservative Party, but I think we shouldn't underestimate. There's a lot of people angry out there because they think that we're too busy arguing with each other about big points that they don't really care about. Meanwhile, their wages aren't very good, the rents are too high, their kids can't get a job the housing waiting lists are too long, and all those things. And they say, what are you doing about that? The health service is under pressure. So we need to get back to those real basic things people are worried about, the bread and butter. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, if I, uh, Matthew, if I ask mm. you, so you have any political news, anything that, that bring your attention last weeks or a couple of weeks or anything that you can share with our viewers? Uh, certainly. Well, I think um, uh, uh, with the Scottish referendum uh, having been settled in September, and I think with the election of Nicola Sturgeon as leader of the SNP uh, uh, only a week ago and the barnstorming speech that she gave, I think we're reminded uh, that the British Constitution is a fluid uh, uh, subject and entity, and I think that we're, we are going to see over the next uh, few decades a process uh, of devolution rather than an event of devolution. I think what will be interesting to see now is how uh, the relationship between Westminster and the nations of the United Kingdom changes, and also how the question of uh, representation for England um, develops within the UK constitution. Well, uh, as, as you mentioned, devolution, actually. Scotland already is, is they, they were fighting for independence, but they mm. couldn't make it, but they are getting lots of, uh, well, it's already devol devolution there, and they are asking more power. Mm. Now, you're asking this, so if England does the same thing, so there is a, is a term called English Board for English uh, uh, Law, yeah. and there will be another English Parliament. So it's sort of already, even if in London, if you see, we have GLA, the gentleman is here, he yeah. knows very well mm. the GLA, what is going on. So mm. it's sort of overlapping and, and lots of bureaucracy is creating, and you are creating, it's not a small government, it's creating the big governance, mm. uh, sorry, big government. Well, I think, I think that there are, the point you make about uh, devolution, um, if you like, uh, exerting an upward pressure on the amount of government that there is in the UK, I think actually what can happen is that, um, is that jurisdictional differences between different devolved assemblies can actually work in favour of promoting best practice, and often best practice can also be the most economic and efficient practice. So it isn't necessarily the case that, that devolution leads to more government or, or more public expenditure, if you like. Yeah, in definitely. fact, if anything, I, one of the strongest arguments in favour of devolving uh, taxation, uh, at least I would say, to uh, to the nations of the United Kingdom, uh, and perhaps also uh, in due course to regions of England, uh, and perhaps even London as well, uh, is that there would be competition between different parts of the UK, which would uh, hold, which would, if you like, uh, 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 make the case for um, for 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 uh, tax efficient government even more clear and apparent to those people that don't live live in tax efficient jurisdictions. Okay. So, what is your uh, thoughts on English Parliament? I think that. Um, uh, I, I'm not dead set against the idea of an English Parliament. However, what I would rather see for the time being is a, a convention whereby English MPs uh, from all parties vote on uh, issues that are very clearly to do with, with English matters. I think if you were to uh, create an English Parliament, um, there, there, there would be an unresolved question about issues that are actually UK-wide issues, like, for example, foreign policy, macroeconomics. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not... Um, 
I, uh, I think uh, for a long time people, people used to say uh, that uh, because England is overwhelmingly the largest part of the United Kingdom, you could tolerate a degree of asymmetry in the devolved settlement in the UK. You could have a devolution of Scotland and Wales. Uh, England might, might not perhaps mind so much if there wasn't okay. a democratic focus to its national life. So, yeah, I, John, think John, I think that's changed. John, 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 you can yeah, jump well, on. Uh, Matt, can I call you Matt? Yeah, yeah sure. absolutely, of course, yeah. John. Okay, Matt is giving He's using a lot of long words, and uh, I agree with some of what he says. I don't normally agree with the Conservatives, but certainly David Cameron is wrong when he says that we should have an English, we should, we should have a, a, an English Parliament. I think that would be crazy. I think it would tear our country apart. And you don't need to have the same solution for every place. But where, where I think everyone's heading in the right direction is that we need to give people the power to make decisions locally. Mm. And so whether it's Town Hundreds Council or London City Hall, London City Hall has done things since we've had a mayor, whether it was a Labour mayor, a Conservative mayor or anything mm. else mayor, which would never have happened if it was run from Westminster, from the national government. So we got the Olympics. That would never have happened under a national government. We've managed to promote improvements in the transport network. That would never have happened as mm. well. There's lots of things that we can do in London because we know our city and how it works. And, you know, there are occasions. I don't, I, I don't want anyone to think that I like the Tory party by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not a Conservative. I'm a Labour politician. But there are some issues where in City Hall, I can sit down with the other side in City Hall and we can agree something's needed for London, which the rest of the country mm. might not like, but we need to bang the drum together to make yeah. it happen. And that's what democracy should be about. Well, uh, the, so one day maybe it's, it's, it's London will be another parliament, so they will just walk Well, OK. Well, at present, you see, we're at risk of having a very intellectual program if we're not careful. Yeah, so, so you're but creating a city, city, uh, city hall, government. Actually. At present, City Hall cannot pass laws, just as the town mm. council cannot pass laws. All they can do is decide where the money goes, basically. Yeah. So if you want to move to that, then that's another big debate. But where I may probably disagree with, with, with Matt, is that following the next election, we need all the political parties to sit down together and work out the best way of doing this. When we gave it to Scotland, to Wales, to Northern Ireland, there was an agreement about that. If we don't do it, without, if we don't do it with agreement, then it's going to be a disaster. So it, we need to spend time and get it right. So what is going on actually? The three heads, they, they just uh, rushed uh, and hit, they panic when uh, Scotland is, is just uh, uh, last well, weekend, they came together and they make a statement. Okay. What is the progress is going on? Well, the that? great thing about democracy is that the voters are always right, you know? They decide, that's their decision. <laughs> and it means, and, and that's, and it means that's that, the best means, thing for any politician to accept yeah. it. And it means that clever people like the three of us may sit here and say, oh, no, the voters got it wrong. But if they vote us out or they vote someone else in, then that's their decision. And we need to live with that. And that's, that's democracy. And it means that they could ask some pretty awkward questions and questions we find inconvenient, like should we be in the European Union? Should we have people coming to our country? Um, are we building, you know, all these things. Uh, mm. People want, they want us to build more houses as long as they're not next door to where they live. You know, all these things that people want and we need a democracy to find a way of doing them. It's difficult, but well, we can right. do it. So, uh, okay, Matt, if I ask Matthew, uh, John was telling about the by-election. Is yeah. uh, David Cameron is sort of, is a failed and, and the biggest threat for Conservative Party uh, uh, more than a, a Labour Party. So what is your opinion about that? Well, uh, there, there, I think there were two parts to your question. Uh, uh, does, does the, uh, did the result uh, in uh, Rochester and Screw pose a fundamental threat to the Conservative Party? One and two, uh, uh, does that pose more of a threat to us than Labour? I think, with, I think to answer the second of those two questions, um, perhaps, more, perhaps more easily than the first, I think that UKIP will, it will and is making an incursion into Labour's vote as well as the Conservative Party's vote. I, mean, I, don't make, I, don't, I, don't, I don't say that out of point scoring. It's but a matter of fact. Nothing like are. as much, if you, uh, Well, if you, look at Hayward, but, if you look at Hayward and Middleton, for example, yeah. shredding Labour's majority there to within 500 votes, then that's very mm. significant. And I think if you look at Rochester and Stude as well, what you see is a collapse um, in Labour's vote from about 49% of the vote in that constituency in 2001 to about 13% in 2014, which is, which is dramatic, mm -hmm. especially given that Rochester and Stude is quite a diverse constituency, remember. It's like Roch Rochester and Stude isn't, <coughs> a, isn't a sort of a conservative seat but for matter of fact is One. Two of the MPs from Conservative Party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, well, no, I, 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 I don't. I don't there is speculation as yeah. some more MPs is jumping towards. No, no. The, the, when, I, when I pointed that, I, I made that point uh, as a sort of uh, an observer rather than as a, as a party politician. I'm not. I, I wasn't sort of suggesting either that UKIP is more of a threat to Labour than it is to us, or that or that UKIP's threat to Labour is in of itself a good thing. Of course, UKIP is also a political threat to the Conservative Party to a much bigger degree. To, to, to uh, relatively at the moment, but it, mm. it all depends. But then it, equally, you mean, you know, there are other complications for Labour. I think that the Green Party is, is, is an irritant. Yeah, just, I think yeah. the SNP in Scotland mm -hmm. is a very serious problem for Labour. Um, but I think with regards to the Conservative Party, um, I think that uh, you know, really what uh, UKIP um, has been able to capitalise on in these two constituencies is two MPs that have defected, taking with them huge amounts of canvassing data, you know, local yeah. party structures. I mean, unlike the STP, for example, uh, UKIP aren't winning 
seats of their own accords. They're, 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 they're based in, they're, you know, they're, they're almost like, they, they've almost got as far as the Limehouse Declaration, although they've only got two rather than four well. MPs. Uh, they, they, what they haven't done yet is win seats out and out. And I think in a general election you'll find that, that UKIP won't be in the same position to throw everything at one seat at a time. And crucially, you'll have MPs like Mark Reckless and uh, Douglas Carswell scrapping with Nigel Farage and other big figures within UKIP for resources. I don't know how, how far UKIP's resource is going to go. Well, uh, Matthew and, and John, thank Thank you. Obviously, time is the biggest constraint when you come to live TV. Uh, and Shubhya Darshak, I'm not sure that you're a politician. The cast, the UK was the biggest threat to the right of their national politics. After I'm a show, the next segment are very interesting topics. Next to see, I'm a show. We are now back to our second segment. So this segment uh, we designed on the basis of, uh, as you know, is PwC report in Tower Hamlets. Uh, that's the whole program will be. And the title will be this program, PwC report, People, Politics and Politician. And uh, to, to, to discuss this issue, actually, we have invited uh, one of the uh, prominent politicians from uh, Tower Hamlet first group. Unfortunately, he failed to attend uh, because of his personal issue. But we have two guests from one is from conservative, one is from labor. And uh, thank you very much to stay with us. Uh, as you know, Tower Hamlet borough is the borough of aspiration, dreams of 32 percent population who were from Bengali people. And we got a MP candidate, even sorry, MP sitting MP. He, she is from Bangladeshi background. And luckily, or fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you say, we have an executive member, first uh, executive mayor from Bangladesh origin. So, Amra Shale, Onek Pote Gesheci, Onek Shunam Urjun Kurisi, Onek Bhalo Kurisi. The same time, we have a uh, problem nowadays, as you are listening, is from a local, national, it is a big media uh, news everywhere about Tar Hamlets. We will discuss with that. And this uh, main thing is PwC, Prime Price Waterhouse Scopers. They just submitted a report, I think, this, some, some weeks ago, and we will discuss with that. And if I start with uh, Matthew, actually, first. Uh, as you are local MP candidate, mm. you are local resident. Obviously, you you read all of these people's are local. The local people they really care about this uh, report. Yes. What is your opinion with this report? What is your thoughts? Says the report is a best value inspection of London Borough of Tower Hamlets. Mm -hmm. Actually, how this best value duty they conducted or they perform with this. Mm. Whole, whole report. I, th I think it's a timely report. I think it's a thorough report, and I think it's a report that throws a spotlight on a uh, number of um, issues that have remained unresolved for far too long, and which legitimately raise concerns uh, in the minds of people right across the political spectrum and right across the uh, different communities that make up Tower Hamlets. Uh, in the in the way in which the mayoral administration and Tower Hamlets Council has been governed and run over the past uh, few years since uh, since 2010, and I think that it's absolutely important. Uh, that this best value inspection uh, is complied with fully. I think that um, uh, what, what I don't want to see, what I think the public wants to see, is still more taxpayers' money being spent on legal fees uh, f uh, uh, in futile challenges to, uh, to, to the conduct and the actual delivery of this report. Um, I, would, um, I would urge uh, all those people uh, who are uh, elected representatives uh, to work uh, to implement, uh, or should I say, to, to help to implement the report fully. Uh, and I look forward to, um, to, to hearing and reading of the um, uh, Commissioner's um, six monthly updates uh, yeah, but over the next um, but the few one years. thing, as you mentioned, is the people of Tower Hamlets, obviously. Mm. They deserve the best. Mm. But at the same time, the large number of people are thinking, actually, is your party, actually, they are in the power. That's mm. your prime ministers and, the, and, 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 and the, your government, actually. Mm. Why are they giving this hard time to the it's a Bengali or is he, you know, this is the first Bengali Muslim elected mayor in Tower Hamlets. 
That's the people think. Well, I think, I think, I think it would be, it would be a, a, a total misca a miscategorization to define the Bangladeshi community in the UK or anywhere else by reference to town and its council. I think that would almost be a, a defamation of an entire community. Uh, I don't think that it is right to say that because the incumbent is of a particular ethnic or religious heritage, therefore the institution is somehow definitively of that ethnic or religious heritage. Uh, and I think it would be both dangerous and divisive for an incumbent to claim that. Uh, I, d I don't think that, uh, that I, I don't think that's a plausible argument at all. I think actually the reputation of the borough would be vastly enhanced if uh, if its administration complied fully with uh, the requirements of this report. And I'd also say, of course, people from all um, religious uh, and ethnic backgrounds and all class backgrounds have an interest in securing uh, good value for taxpayers' money, which uh, hitherto has not been properly sought by this council. Okay. Um, if I go to John, obviously, it's, I think you have more experience than anyone else. You, you ran a, a mayoral election against him in 2014 mm. uh, in May, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, you couldn't uh, win with him. Well, and it's, he it's democracy, him. you know. Yeah, as you <laughs> said, it's the, uh, it's the people's choice. I think yep. That's the part of democracy, actually. But now there is a report coming against him. What does it okay. mean to you, this report? And well, what is the main segments, actually, this report? Well, okay. First of all, I'm very proud to be part of this community in Tower Hamlets and to work alongside people from all different backgrounds in Tower Hamlets, which is the most exciting place, in my opinion, in the UK. There's a lot going on here, a lot of change, a lot of opportunity. People come here, wherever they come from, hungry to improve their lives. And a lot of people manage that as well. So there's a lot of success in Tower Hamlets. I'm very proud that we have uh, the country's only directly elected executive mayor from a BME background as well because I think a lot of us have worked hard to open the doors for everyone wherever they come from to have an opportunity to be involved in politics. I was looking forward this evening to debating hopefully with Lutfi Rahman himself because he's the elected mayor but he has always refused to debate even when I stood against him to be mayor. Uh, but then we were offered Ohid Ahmed uh, who was the deputy mayor and he pulled out at the last minute and I think that's pretty shameful as well yeah. because in a democracy the job of people is to be accountable to the people they're elected to, and the TV stations are part of the ways of doing part of the way of doing that. Yeah, so that's, I'm not that's, answering your question yet. I'm just saying that this no, is a pretty bad it's situation. Just, our job to so, is not yeah. to judge anyone good. Yeah, or just, yeah. We need yeah. to so, bring in a, so, in a table and, and discuss it. So and I was hoping, I was hoping Ohid or Lutfi or whoever came would be able to explain to us why they have done what they have done. The auditors, you know, a lot of people, a lot of parents want their kids to be accountants when they, when they grow up and go through college. It's a very noble thing to be. They're not fraudsters, auditors. They have given a very honest report, and they've raised serious questions about the way the council deals with grants, yeah. um, the way the council disposes of buildings, the way the council funds the media, um, and uh, the way in which the council has failed to have senior officers in appoint appointments. Now, if I'm the elected mayor, I need to make sure those things happen properly and they are not happening properly under the current mayor, and that's the problem. Now, he needs to explain to us what he'll do to get it right. It may have been a genuine mistake, but instead, what he always does is tell us that he's a victim. First of all, he said, I was a racist when I stood against him, uh, or people around him said that. And then he said, I think, that the Conservative government is attacking him because he's Bengali. And now he says the accountants are attacking him because of his background. Um, I don't know who isn't attacking the BBC when they did Panorama. But PwC well. is not, so they are I not think, serving for any party, yeah. it's an independent well, precisely, body. Precisely, actually. that's it's the point, you see. They are an independent bunch of people, they're accountants, they have a professional code of conduct, they're not going to be playing party political games, even if you think I am, they are not doing that. Uh, so he doesn't have anywhere to hide on this, and it's serious allegations about the way you run your business. Um, so my but the one thing, and he welcomed actually, is initially, I think, well, in, in July, uh, uh, when, uh, when they started well, the investigation. Okay. He welcomed, welcomed it, and then he spent and tens and tens of thousands of pounds trying to stop it in the courts, and then when he couldn't stop it in the courts, he welcomed it again. I think that's not exactly welcoming it, you know? It's a bit like me... Uh, um, is there any investigation going from City Hall? Uh, I don't think there is an investigation from City Hall. The Conservatives at City Hall said there was. I don't think there is. Uh, housing money is spent in this borough. And I think there are already checks and balances to make sure that's spent properly. Do you think an investigation should be carried by uh, City Hall? I don't think... I think one thing I'm very clear about in this is you can't have politicians throwing investigations at each other. Yeah. You've got to only have an investigation when there's something serious which people think needs to be looked into. And so the government minister said... He asked the auditor to look at this. If they come back and said there was nothing, we'd have all been happy. They've come back and said that there are problems. But again, one thing I need to ask uh, uh, John, as, as I ask uh, Matthew, yeah. is, 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 uh, he, he became elected uh, as around 37,000 37, of votes, actually. Yep. 
And there is large number of, a huge number of people, they think it is just sort of, uh, it is a coordinated attack by Labour and Conservative, as he is the, he is, he is the first uh, elected mayor uh, from a um, Muslim community and even Bangladeshi community. And just they, they, they don't want to uh, destroy his reputation, he has lots of good job, and people are still happy with him. Well, I think he, if he wants to hide behind that, then he is not being as good and serious and honest a person as he should be. He should be out here in this studio explaining to us what he did and why he did it. And it doesn't matter whether he's Bengali or English or African or anything else. He is there to serve the people of our borough, all the people of our borough, and he should be honest and straight with people about that. He talks as if he's a victim. If money has been misspent, the victim is not him. The victim is the people of Tower Hamlets. So say, for example, he gave funding to an organization in one area. It means that another organization in another area, which might have scored better, didn't get that money. And so people who might need those services didn't get them. When we look at the report, yeah, yeah. Well, well, when we look at the report, it says mm. that geographically there are some parts of the borough who've had a lot more money than other parts of the borough. Now it may be they have got more disadvantaged people in them, but when you look at where the disadvantaged people in the borough live, you'll find there are places like Bromley by Bow, where there's a lot of people who are on very low incomes and need good services, and they don't get anything like as much as people in other parts of the borough. So it's not a fair, it doesn't look like a fair system. But as you said, the grants as a so but, far... Uh, but, but, well, but if he was here, he could tell us why he did it. And he could be, it could be that he would say... Yeah, absolutely. It could be he would say, this is exactly why I did it. I'm very open. I, you're absolutely wrong, John. And the viewers would watch it and they would say, yeah. you're right and we support you. Unfortunately, but, but he, he it didn't happen, actually. We invited, yeah. as you know, yeah, invited yeah. Uh, last minute uh, the, because of their personal well, uh, issue. They, 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 they well, it's not the first time people here. have found... All right. Problems, uh, uh, ten minutes uh, from broadcast time. Yes, you know? uh, John. Um, as you mentioned, there's a four actually four core uh, core issues actually. Is this uh, PwC report actually? They they have looked at as you mentioned grants. One of these. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, on the report is said there are 954 of uh, funds and and grant is given to uh, numerous organisation yep. and different different time and they raise the question of of uh, the process and the practices okay. and. But again, as you said, uh, the report nowhere mentioned actually that they did any fraudulent or they did purposely this thing. So, what do you mean that they? Well, the, the whole activities happen. There, there is a big question about their uh, integrity and, and and the process and procedures. How to do this? Say, as you mm -hmm. said, uh, grants is given to. Uh, a very uh, narrow group of people, maybe they don't comply and they don't, um, uh, the, the, uh, they're not eligible to get these sorts of grants. I don't want people to think that nobody who wasn't a friend of the mayor got a grant. It's not true. There's a lot of good organizations across the whole borough got grants, but something went wrong. There were 347 grant applications where somewhere between the recommendations and the final decision, the recommendations were changed. That's 347 out of 431. There were 33 organizations for whom there was a recommendation that they shouldn't get a grant because they didn't pass the basic tests. Yeah, that's and, nice. they got, and they got funding. They got over 600,000 pounds between them of local people's money, even though they didn't pass the test. Now, it could be you have a really good organization. You say you don't pass the test. We're going to help you to get to the position where you can get the grant. But there's no evidence that happened. Instead, what seemed to happen was people used what they said was local factors, they said... Local knowledge. Yeah, local knowledge, and they, they said, on the basis of that, we're going we're gonna to give this organisation a grant, even though our officers say it doesn't have the safety procedures to make sure the money's spent properly. OK. Uh, if I come to Matthew, actually, as, as John mentioned, uh, it's, 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 it's quite lots of organisations, they don't comply, they don't, they're not eligible to get these sorts of grants, mm -hmm. but it's still they get grants uh, because of this uh, elected uh, uh, people, they said it's a local knowledge. So what is your opinion and what do you think they followed and what sorts of uh, process they maintained there? And uh, there is a clear question, mm. their process and uh, procedures in, in PwC report. Well, I think w one of the, one of the uh, roles of the, or of the uh, commissioners will be to ensure in future that processes are, are more rigidly followed and that, that, pro that, that processes and procedures lead to fair and thorough decisions. I think uh, uh, John's absolutely right to say that there is a long-running controversy about some council wards in the borough are apparently receiving significantly larger amounts of money per head than other parts of the borough. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, the, 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 there's quite a significant uh, discrepancy between the sums allocated to, uh, to, to some of the wards in Bethnal Green as per se Bromley by Bow, despite the fact that uh, a needs-based reasoning may say that residents in Bromley by Bow 
uh, were just as needy as some of the wards in Bethnal Green that received more funding. I think that um, I think that goes to basic, that, that goes right to the heart of, of whether or not administration is impartial and accessible. And if there is evidence of um, council officials or officers or or uh, elected representatives that are not uh, colour blind or not community blind, then that's very serious and that needs to be um, looked into. Well, there is some, some, some more is, is clear question and about the property disposal. I believe, mm -hmm. uh, John, you know, that has, mm -hmm. there are, so far, according to the report, there are 185 property uh, disposal transaction during the period uh, 2010 and 2014 uh, mm -hmm. uh, till uh, investigation. And they raised the real, uh, uh, real question about their process, again, yeah. as, as a, one of the popular town hall, another was Saturn Street Depot, another is Mellish Street mm. uh, plot of land. Mm. So uh, what is your explanation to the viewers? Because people, they want to know actually what is the facts and figures. Mm. Uh, is it how much is true? As I said, a mm. large number of people, they think is still they believe this report is just sort of coordinated and, and mm. an attack against her as a minority mm. uh, Muslim male. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing to point out is that PricewaterhouseCooper is an independent institution. It's a professionally regulated uh, uh, auditing uh, company. It operates a number of different jurisdictions all around the world. And it would, wouldn't be in uh, PricewaterhouseCooper's um, commercial interest as much as anything else to start taking stances on matters that were politically motivated or otherwise. So I think that, I think that the, the victim card that has been thrown up uh, 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 as a way of, of avoiding scrutiny for what PwC is exposed needs to be cast aside, and people need to realize that PwC is a, is a legitimate a professional services firm, and that there is no valid reason at all to, uh, to suspect any political bias on PwC's part at all. Um, with regards to, to I mean, you mentioned the sale of Poplar Town Hall. Town Hall, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think, I think the, the evidence is pretty clear that the, the, uh, the, the Dreamster, the entity that, um, that was eventually awarded the, uh, the, the, the sale, uh, what was, wasn't the highest uh, bidder, nor, nor was it indeed, um, I think, a, a bidder that placed its bid in in a timely fashion. There are also question marks over whether or not uh, certain people in Dreamster were uh, or had political relationships with key figures within the administration. And actually, far from it being the case that anybody is being victimized by this investigation, actually, it's in the interests of all communities and all groups of people in our borough that, that PwC's report has observed its findings taken into account and the commissioners that have been appointed cooperated with. Well, John, if I come to John, John, you, you, again, you were involved in, in town mm -hmm. politics for a pretty long time and you ran for election and you were the uh, council leader as well. Yep. So what is your explanation of this property disposal as, as a PwC uh, explained this report? See, Especially, okay. obviously, as I said, 185 property transactions happened. They couldn't do all of this uh, the check and, and balance by this short period of time. Okay. but they found these three, uh, three, three, uh, okay. three of the properties there are, is very remarkable. Right, there are very strict rules about how you spend money, and they're not designed to stop people doing their job. They're designed to make sure that everything is clear and transparent and honest, and no one's going to raise objections to it. And there's no reason at all why the people who ended up owning these buildings couldn't have ended up owning them by going through all those procedures. But it looks like the corners were cut, and that raises the question of whether we really got value for money and whether the right people were chosen. And the problem with that is uh, the people who are chosen will have a stain against their name. People will say, was it dodgy? The mayor will have a stain against his name. Did he do something dodgy? If I was the mayor or if, if any mayor, you could, you could legitimately make a decision, but you need to make sure you go through the proper process. You, you know, if it's a grant, if we go back to grants, you could give a grant to an organization, even though your officers didn't score it very hard, you could say, this is a very important organization. They may not be very good at what they're doing at present, but it's very important we fund them in this place. And your officers would then have to go away and work out how you could hold their hand, how you could help them to get the systems in place, how you could get uh, some specialist advice to help them, and then they could do their service. But you can't just do it like that. The, the problem is it's, it's like not proper process. Okay, as you said, is that proper process was mm. not followed. At the same time, PwC mm. report is clearly mentioned that yep. there is a source of doubts with this process and practices. Mm. Is it gone yeah. according to value well, practice? I, I, give you, I, so, I was thinking about this on the way. I'll give you a really simple example, because this is all clever stuff about grants and buildings. But say, for example, you did a driving test. And at the end of the test, the driving instructor said to you, you've done a pretty good test but I've decided you're not going to pass because I don't like you. <laughs> You'll be very unhappy. Uh, indeed. And if you did the driving test and you went up the curb and you banged into a lamppost, and at the end of it the driving instructor said, well, well you're, you're a good man, well done, I passed your test, <laughs> then you would, be, you would say, hang on, there's something wrong here. Mm. 
<laughs> it's that. So it's, it's. I'm not saying that they're being completely madly reckless like those examples, but they're not following the rules. But and and you see, and if if I want to have safe drivers on my streets, then I want to make sure that we have good driving instructors and good testers doing those Both things. It's the, same, it's the same yeah. with the grants. You okay, know? so you are telling the good driver you need and, and the same thing, <laughs> good, good instructor. It's a good yeah. thing. It's a council, actually, there's a property, as I mentioned here, this three, four of the uh, uh, yeah. property name. Can they bring it back? I'm, I've no idea. I think if people, I don't think, I don't think there's a police investigation. I mean, I've, I've, I've no idea. I think what they're saying is they sold them, they signed a contract, the building has gone, as I understand it. And uh, unless someone finds anything criminal, then we'll have to either wait to the end of the lease or say goodbye to it. Well, that means, uh, well, Eric Pickle, actually, is, is, I need to ask Matthew, is, mm. is, 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 is from your party, he is our uh, community minister. Yeah. He gone to parliament and he was telling he's a rotten borough. Mm. Mm. So lots of people, they are offended here, actually. And, and if this report come and report is showing clearly according to this report and, mm. and John is telling us and you mentioned there is lots of irregularities in, mm. inside. Mm. So are we really Rottenborough? And, and, and if we are re really Rottenborough and we did uh, some, we, we found some irregularities, yeah. why this property cannot back to <coughs> council and they cannot take this uh, as back from the owner, current owner, or who, 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 who have taken this on? Well, I think, the, I think in terms of, um, of, of where the actual property lies now, that, that'll be for, um, for, for any legal investigation to, to consider. In terms of the, the, the first part of your question uh, and, and, where, and the statement by the Secretary of State in the House of Commons, I think, if I think that um, it's unquestionably the case that, that the way in which the council has been run over the past few years has brought the borough into disrepute. But of course, any people are bigger than the administrative district within which they live. Um, uh, and I don't think that anyone uh, should uh, feel that uh, a failure on the part of the way, the way in which the council is run is any reflection on them. It's a reflection on the incumbent representatives. And what matters uh, to restore the good name of the borough is that this report is fully complied with and that the auditors are able, sorry, the commissioners are able to go about their job unhindered and with the full cooperation of council officers and uh, councillors and the mayor. Well, uh, one more oh, one more thing, as you mentioned, is uh, uh, publicity expenditure. I believe there's mm -hmm. a four key factor actually they have uh, they have looked at. Uh, there is a, there is a report actually 2012 to 2014 that is still this uh, investigation. There is 313,500 pound more or less uh, uh, they spent for three media advisor, uh -huh. and that media advisor actually they didn't maintain their works and procedure again. So what is your idea about this thing? And, and people want to know, actually. Okay. Most I was a council leader, and when I was a council leader, I did my media through the council's press office. I didn't have my own press officer as the, in the leadership office who would do my political work for me. And the mayor seems to have had someone in his office who is doing his political work for him. I think he can probably do that, but he has to be very, very careful. And, I, and the evidence suggests he has not been careful enough and he spent a lot of money on it. But one thing, PwC, so one thing they mentioned actually, their total publicity budget is not actually is so bad. It's, it's moderate. Yeah. It's not excessive. Okay. But what they raised the question, say, as an advisor and Eastern Life as well, Eastern Life, I think, is your mm -hmm. product actually. Yeah, but well, it was I was a product of labor yeah. actually. It was good in those days. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> those days, all right. So, uh, the, well, it's become a lot more political. So, you, your, uh, your son became I, bad boy now. I don't think. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, when uh, your I don't son think. became uh, adult. Well, when I was leader, we didn't. We may have had my photograph in it as leader once or twice, but it wasn't a sort of party political newspaper for me. It was about information in the borough. But anyway, um, that's twenty something. That's twenty years ago. All right. Okay. It's, but but uh, you, you're asking about so uh, media advice. It's, it's changed now. Is it? Well, it's changed. It, it did become fairly ridiculous. We, there was an inquiry, and there were something like seven hundred references to the mayor. And, three references to the other parties or something you know mm. it was all right john uh, john and matthew thank you thank you viewers we will come back after a very short break obviously time again is a big constraint yeah. and we will discuss more about pwc report as a third segment as well stay with us
সালামু আলাইকুম সুপ্রিয় দর্শক আপনাদের অনেক ধন্যবাদ আমরা আসলে আমাদের প্রোগ্রামের থার্ড সেগমেন্টে এসে গেছি আমাদের এই সেগমেন্ট স্টার্ট করার আগে আবার স্মরণ করে দিয়ে যাচ্ছি তো আমাদের এই সপ্তাহে যে কুইজ আছে সেটা হলো আমাদের যে এই সপ্তাহের কুইজ হাউ মেনি কাউন্সিলস আর ইউজিং মেয়র এন্ড ক্যাবিনেট মডেল অফ গভর্নেন্স উইথ এ ডাইরেক্ট ইলেক্টেড এক্সিকিউটিভ মেয়র ইন ইংল্যান্ড এর ওয়ার্ল্ডস ইজ ইট 15 17 অর 13 আপনারা আপনাদের উত্তর পাঠাতে পারবেন টিভির কর্নারে দেওয়া আছে ইমেল অ্যাড্রেস পি এন বি অ্যাট চ্যানেল আই ইউরোপ ডট টিভি আর দিস সেগমেন্ট উইল টক অ্যাবাউট পি ডাব্লিউ সি রিপুট লেসনস অ্যান্ড ওয়ে ফরওয়ার্ড আপনারা জানেন ইউ লার্ন অল অফ দিস থিং অ্যান্ড অ্যাজ ইউ নো থার হ্যামলেটস ব্র্যান্ডেড অ্যাজ এ রট অ্যান্ড বড়ো সেম সেম টাইম সো মেনি পিপুল দে পোট্রেড আস অ্যাজ এ অ্যাজ এ লোডস অফ ক্রনিজম করাপশন ওল সোর্স অফ ব্যাড থিং বাট উই ডি লোডস অফ গুড থিং অ্যাজ ওয়েল অ্যান্ড how can we go forward and how can we make our borough better and and peaceful for everyone and i'm sure especially our uh, people the desire to listen this borough is running accordingly and with pride and dignity and we will discuss about this thing in this section and if i start with first john uh, we had lots of uh, conversation during this uh, couple of segment and at the same time is lots of people they think democracy under attack in london tower of london borough of tower hamlets as in your all 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 friend mr ken ken livingston ah. and at the same time another good buddy was here uh, respect leader of what's the gentleman galloway. Uh, george galloway yeah. they marched on the street and they were talking the, uh, about tower hamlets democracy and they came here to defend actually democracy in tower hamlets Do you really think democracy under attack in Tower Hamlets? Okay. Uh, first of all, Ken Livingstone is an old friend of mine. He, he never was a friend of mine, but I've worked with him for eight years at City Hall, and we got to know and respect each other. Okay. And he did a fantastic job as Mayor of London. I think when he's commenting today on Tower Hamlets, he, is, he doesn't really know what he's talking about, and I think he's wrong. Tower Hamlets is not a rotten borough, but decisions have been made in the town hall which haven't been open. and the mayor is a big is a big man he's uh he's a clever guy he's been you know he's a, a lawyer he should be able to explain to us why he's done what he's done and he shouldn't be forever blaming someone else but people are a little bit confused as you said ken livingston is, is a big political figure in mm -hmm. in in london obviously and you are representing yep. in 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 east and the city gla in gla well, and at the same time okay. you are if actively involved in ken, in tower okay. politics ken, so people ken are is, a little bit confused okay. ken is wrong on this back in the i mean i've known ken for quite a long time and back in the 1970s and 1980s ken was a good left wing leader of the great london council and he fought a lot of battles including for equality and his record on that i think is a very proud record he fought at a time when people from black minority ethnic backgrounds gay people disabled people women were relatively more disadvantaged because of the way society worked and and there's still a long way to go on that i mean nowadays the conservative party agree with this labor party agree with this all main parties agree with this we need to create a more equal society but but we've had most of those battles look for rama cannot claim that we're back in the 1980s we're not the people like me fought to make sure that people like look for rama could have a voice and i was very proud when he became a council leader i think equally he's up there at the top table he needs to explain to us why he's done what he's done and a lot of people think what he's done is wrong and he needs to explain that he's not a victim the people of tower hamlets are the victim from what's happened ken livingston is living in the past in my view on this i respect the stuff he's done on the olympics on transport on policing his leadership in the past but i think he's wrong on this but i'll tell you one thing what people are thinking and what he mm. is thinking at that as he said actually as current uh, current prime minister of rahman and and he supported since actually to, uh, 2010 because there was a uh, unjust actually that people are ah. thinking unjust and unfair right. treatment uh, with uh, mr mayor uh, sorry mr rahman and uh, and he just uh, supported him and he still he is good friend of him and he is still he is supporting and he is thinking and he obviously just uh, i think was week ago they came together and a large number of people yep. participated with them yeah. and he used the poor people are are, are uh, with them yeah. and they are telling yes actually there is is democracy under attack by are the main uh, two parties well I, uh, he's wrong um we have rules and the rules appear to have been broken and whoever the mayor is should explain why they've been broken they're not picking on him because of his background they're picking on him because things have gone wrong now if i'd been mayor i mean if i'd been mayor I stood to be mayor and these things had happened i would expect to be held to account by the auditors what one of the problems i have with the way it works at present is 
that these guys are not prepared to turn up and explain why they've done what they've done. There could be reasons why they've done what they've done, but they won't explain to us. All they're saying is it's a stitch up. But there are serious questions. This 200 page report from auditors looking into Tower Hamlets raises serious questions, and they have got a duty to answer those questions. And they are pretending that it's a stitch up by someone else. It's just not good enough. You know, right. if you run a company and your accountants say your accounts aren't any good, you can't just say, oh, it's someone else's fault. You'll, <laughs> you'll find yourself in court in the same way. You can't run a council, have serious people tell you you're doing the rules, you're breaking the rules, and pretend it's someone else's fault. You just can't do that. The victims are the people of our borough, whoever they are, wherever they're from, they're being stitched up by this because it's not working properly in their interests. Okay. Um, if I come to Matthew, uh, so there is a lot of question about this council's ability, credibility and, and competency, all of these things. Mm. Has the council lost trust in the community or are or, or, or people just let down by the council, you think? I think? I think the council probably has lost trust. I think there probably are people who feel that it's not worth voting. I think there are almost certainly people who feel that Tower Hamlet's council is not administered in an impartial or proper way. And doubtlessly there are people who feel uh, that their communities have somehow been disadvantaged as a result of the way in which resources have been allocated. And far from it being the case that that sense of, of disillusionment comes from this report alone, it actually comes from the way in which the council has been administered in the past. I mean, what, th what this report has looked into is precisely what I think a lot of people have found dispiriting. So I think uh, I would agree with John that uh, what people probably, you know, what, what, what the electorate of Tower Hamlets doubtlessly want is for those people in power to take responsibility for the mistakes that they've made and the, the poor decisions that they've taken. Uh, and, and, and what they will also expect, I'm sure, is that this report is implemented uh, in full. I, I, think, I, I, think, I think a lot of people will see this report as having been um, a much needed and welcome light shone into the nooks, crannies and crevices of uh, Tower Hamlet's Council. Okay, but this report is a tragedy because it shouldn't have reached this point. Hmm. It should not have reached this, this point. point. Yeah. The questions have been asked for a long time by yeah. the Labour councillors, by the Conservative councillors. Yeah. I mean, that's up to what they do. The My mates in the, in the Labour Party have been asking serious questions and they've just been told this is all rubbish. Now we end up with serious auditors looking at it and saying it's not rubbish. But again, um, but John, it's a, it's a good, good, good question actually. Is, is it a source of failure shaped by was it conservative and labor as well? So you fail to make them accountable during uh, the whole that's process. That's a very, very, it's very not, good question. It's not one the process. Yeah. It's, it's started that's, a pretty long time. Okay. So that's, what have you done during this okay, time? Okay, that is a really, really good question. And it's a very important question. But before I answer it, because I'll answer it in a second, I just want to say one thing, which is Townhamlets is not a rotten borough. I'm not prepared to stand anywhere and say a town is a rotten borough. A lot of good stuff happens in Townhamlets. Some rotten things have happened in the town hall, but town is not rotten borough. We've got some good schools, improving schools. People are making Indeed. real progress. Yes, yeah? lots of people are uh, proud of And there are other things. This, I'm very proud to be part of this borough. I'm not prepared to have Eric Pickles or anyone else say this is a rotten borough because it's not. But to answer your question, um, it is a very important question here, which is we have a directly elected executive mayor. How do you hold that mayor to account? And what's happened also, this is another part of the Price Waterhouse report, is that the senior officers of the council have not been secure and heavyweight enough to stand up to the administration and so the challenges haven't been effective. But the, the situation came now as, is, as you know says according to the report and, and the media all of this information yeah. there are three commissioners as already appointed and they are coming to uh, sit on top of the mayor's executive authorities. Yeah. What will be their job and what are they going to do, do to bring the change They're, in the borough? Okay, well their job will be to monitor a whole number of decisions and make sure that the rules are followed properly in future. Um, and, uh, and they will be sitting there like eagles, if you like, out on the town hall roof, looking down and making sure that things are done properly. They will take over all the grant decisions, so the mayor won't have any role in the grant decisions. They will take over those decisions. So is it not undermining democratic choice? Yes, uh, it is. Democratic yeah, but, but choice because people, question, well, actually, okay. he got 37,000 of vote. Yeah. And people send him as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as you said, instructor yeah. of uh, driving instructor. Okay. Now he doesn't have power. Well, okay, I'll go, back, I'll go back to the driving example. He will have opportunity yeah. okay. in future when you come to the election. Look, here you go. Okay. I did not yeah, have opportunity. No, no, no. I was well, well, that, but that's wrong, you see. He, he got 30 37,000 votes and he's the mayor, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have to follow the rules. It's mm. a bit like me yeah. saying, I'm a good driver, I've passed my driving test, therefore I can drive the wrong way down the motorway. Of course I can't do that. You know, there are rules and they've got to be mm. followed. Yeah, but even, even democratically elected bodies have to operate within the rule of law and have to abide by, uh, by procedure in order to be properly constituted. And I think uh, that, uh, you know, I don't think anybody would say that, that democratic man mandates are never 
if you like, uh, in a vacuum. There are always rules and procedures that need to be followed, uh, precisely so that people can properly scrutinize mm. uh, incumbent politicians. And and if, yeah. I, if I ask you, Matthew, as you mentioned earlier, there's, there is this, this community, actually, in, in Borough, is clear division. You can, you can see, you can feel it. Do you think this report created, actually, is, 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 is more division, and what will be the impact for the long run of this borough? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it does add uh, to um, a, a, an historic difference of mind between different communities in Tower Hamlets. Um, I think that uh, what, what, what has, if you like, pushed, um, if you like, society in Tower Hamlets to a certain extent in the direction of, 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 of having communities that feel different from each other is the perception that the council doesn't work fairly or properly. And actually what this report will do, and once, it's re it's, it's, once the uh, commissioners are in place, what it will do is that it will restore confidence in the council as an impartial well, um, but Let me authority. explain what is the, uh, uh, the division. Because a very large number of Bangladeshi origin, again, I have mm. to say, because there are 32 percent people are from mm. Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Bangladesh well, that, that, that's a huge asset to the, to the borough. Def, yeah, that's that's they're definitely be proud of that. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure John will be agree with that. Yeah, but yeah, there is a absolutely. question. They are thinking this is the, the first mayor, and, and it just sorts of power are using well, I, by I, I, what, what, labor what, and conservative. What, 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 I, what, 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 what I would say is that, is that those people need to be reassured that this is about um, proper procedure and this is about accountability. It's not about uh, in any way, shape or form targeting one community. And crucially, I think now that these um, commissioners will be in place, I think actually what you will find is that the council will come to be seen by all communities as operating in the public interest rather than any political interest. Yeah. So what will be the answer for you? Obviously, after some times, maybe mayor, mayor group, mayor's group, they will be able to say, well, uh, as I ask uh, John the same question, well, I, though I was elected by the people, but I was not able to run this borough properly because of intervention by uh, this, this current government and mm -hmm. obviously it's conservative there in power. And Mr. Pickles, he is involved with this heavily. So how do you defend and how do you give answer to the people I think I think I think I think you trust the people and you trust their discernment and you trust their common sense uh, and what you do is you ensure that um, this report is in the public domain which of course it is and what you ensure is that um, is that every time these uh, commissioners report back to the Secretary of State uh, that uh, that people understand what is uh, going on and why they're making recommendations about the way in which things should be changed mm -hmm. um, what I think must also happen frankly in order to preserve the good relations that exist between communities and, and, and to work, if you like, in favor of a better model of politics in Tower Hamlets is for some of the more irresponsible politicians in the borough to desist from suggesting that any criticism of Tower Hamlets or any criticism of, uh, of any of the current incumbents is a criticism of their respective communities. Mm. We need to be more, we need to really try and remove this language of uh, community and, uh, and, and group from politics in Tower Hamlets and get back to viewing politics <coughs> as being about differences along an ideological spectrum and differences about policy and differences about, about the, the, the factual evidence about the success of policies, not what community you're part of. Well, I, I would s largely agree with that. I think there are differences. So the Bengali community is quite a cohesive community. It's got a strong cultural, linguistic mm. tradition. There's, people are tied together by faith. I, have, I, mean, I, I want to support that and I want people to feel a strong sense of identity to be both British and Bengali mm. and to make progress, you know. But when I fought the election, and my party fought the election, we said it was about one East End. Mm. What, so we may be different, you know, people may have different cultural backgrounds, different families, but they were part of a single community. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's but, the, but, it, but there'll be differences. So say you pick, you pick the Bengali community, within the Bengali community there are still a lot of people who are, who are not very well off and not, doing, not very successful in the economy in London and we need to work on, focus on giving them the skills. But there's quite a lot of white people in that position as well. Yeah, as I said, around not, the 60% yeah. people are from different yeah, but, 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 no, but They no, are telling but, well, well, okay, the they, they, they are sorry. sorts of, they, they think they are sorts of deprived even on the yeah. other way and they, they are yeah. really unhappy in some situation. Yeah. Personally, when we, we but, went to our side and they absolutely. said, well, hang on, these people are, are involved here in politics. They imported this sort of culture from absolutely. outside of the so, country and so they are implementing yeah. And, uh, which is not uh, complying any British value, which is... is yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah, we could look at the Somali community. So There's that a lot is of creating a yes. source of divergence. Yeah, people. well, it can do, yes. And there are, there are quite a lot of white people who are not doing very well. There are a lot of older people just living on a basic state pension, just like a lot of Bengali people are as well who are retired, and that's not a very good income to live on. And they want to know what we're going to do for them as well. So it's about working for one community where the needs are, you mm. know. 
If you own a TV station, you probably don't need much help from, a, uh, uh, from the council. If you're living in a one-bedroom flat and you're overcrowded, then you probably do need some help from the council. It doesn't really matter uh, what your ethnic background is, although mm. we need to respect people's backgrounds and differences to get the job so done John, properly. Uh, if I ask you, says, say if there was a Labour mayor on the council, mm -hmm. and that he could be there, actually, as you, you ran for uh, mayoral election. Well, I wouldn't mind that. So job. what would be your <laughs> strategy and what would be your plan and, and, and the works for the people of Tower Hamlets and who are the who who are the people who deserve the most actually. Okay. Well uh, I, what is the okay. way forward from this uh, well, uh, situation right now? Well the purpose of this program is not for me to do a party political broadcast and tell you why I should be mayor because that, that, that wouldn't be the right use of this program. But what we do need to do is make sure that the council is transparent, hmm. that whoever is elected there turns up to meetings, even when people don't agree with him or her and they explain why they've done and they listen respectfully and people understand why what is being done is being done. A council that works by the rules as well, so it says we want to give grants to particular organisations and we want our officers to work out a way of doing it which is transparent, which makes sense, which everyone can sign up to. Not everyone will agree with everything the council does, that's never the case, that's why we have political parties, but we need to be more open about what we're doing because otherwise we're going to end up separating people apart. I mean, obviously most of the viewers of this program are from the Bengali community. Yeah. And the simple question is, why do people come to live in the UK from anywhere? It's not to be separate, it's to benefit mm. from yeah. the things that this country can offer while still maintaining language, culture, faith. Yeah, that's you know. and, and, and I think everyone understands that. And the problem in town is we're at risk of being shoved into a, a dead end here where the mayor wraps himself in, in, in his culture and faith and ethnicity and says it's all because we're victims and the community is not a victim community, the community is a very successful community mm. and we need to unlock that yeah. success. Yeah. Okay. Um, Matthew, if I ask you as a, as, a, as, a, as a conservative parliamentary candidate in your area, there is a full um, uh, factors actually, PwC, that they, they, they work out very intensely um, about the grants, property disposal, publicity, expenditure. Mm. Uh, how would you make it more transparent, more transparent and say if you have a, a, a mayor in, in future, how would you con ensure that people mm. will be happy and they can see is really good, transparent, Nice borough. Before yeah. ask, uh, giving answer, would you allow just, I have a call actually. Yeah. Assalamualaikum caller. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Kya bol sen Faizan? Aapne naam tak tu bol ben please. I'm a one number look of it. Aapne question taki Faizan? I'm a bumbly boy bol taki Mazhar. Acha bhai, tu bol ben aapne question taki please. Yeah, I just wanted to know, is it okay to speak in English? Yes, please. Go on. Yeah, I just wanted to know regards to this politics show where we've got two uh, party members here. Yeah. That they are saying that this is a fair and de 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 democratic voting system. Why is it that they are arguing this case that it hasn't been fair? What proof do they have that it hasn't been a fair election? Well, uh, for your kind information, we did not speak anything uh, uh, ele election fraudulent or anything. We just Labour we are uh, speaking. They are saying that okay. uh, he wants a transparent uh, okay. council and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transparency because we, we voted, are residents in Tower Hamlets have voted this mayor in. Yeah. Why are you now trying to take away this mayor from okay. us? There yeah, please. Um, I'm not trying to take the mayor away. I'm a Democrat. I'm not a bad loser. I lost the election. The mayor was elected and, uh, and he's, he needs to do his job properly. So I'm not trying to kick him out of the town hall. There's a separate bunch of people who put a petition into the, uh, to the courts who want to get rid of him, but that's between him and the courts. You know? um, yeah, that's not my argument. As far as I'm concerned, he was elected. He's got to do his job for four years and we need to make sure he does it properly. All right, Matthew, if I get a quick answer because the time is very constrained. Sure. Isn't it? Yeah. Some people are asking for actually mayor resignation. Mm. Are you agree with him or not? Um, I think that if I was um, look for Roman, um, I would be considering my options as an incumbent mayor. And I would be, I'd be asking myself the question whether or not, um, uh, given the, the enormity of the questions that my administration faces, and, and given the enormity of the, of the problems that this report has thrown up, would I not be um, a better place actually um, uh, uh, calling a by-election on myself 
uh, on, on my incumbency as mayor, sta standing in a, in a, in a, in a mayoral by-election. Um, and I, I think I'd also be thinking to myself, actually, um, should I um, continue uh, in this position as mayor? And I, I would invite Le Fromm to consider all options uh, um, uh, in terms of whether or not he, he, uh, he, uh, he seeks a new mandate from the, from the people of this borough. I think that the, uh, the evidence that has come to light and the questions that this, this report poses are so serious that there does really need to be uh, a reconsideration of the mandate of this administration. Okay. I'll ask the same question to John. Um, yeah. There are some people there asking for his resignation, and there are a huge number of people that say, no, he's one of the successful mayor in Tower Hamlets, and he will stay with us, and he will be with us. What is your opinion on that? Well, what I said at the time was he's had serious criticism, and he should consider whether he's got the skills to continue as mayor. And he has considered that, and he's made a statement. He said he's not going to resign. Fine. He can carry on. But he needs to show that he's learned from this. You know, he needs to have humility. Uh, I think when people make mistakes, they should admit that they made a mistake and they should tell people why they're going to get it right. There's plenty of stories in history of people who made mistakes and learned from them and did a good job afterwards, and he needs to do that. All right. Thank you very much, John, and thank you, Matthew, to stay thank with you. us and, and give your valuable view to our viewers. Shupriya Darshak, Apna Apna Amadeh Shadeh Thakben, and Amadeh Sheshkar Agaj, each of the requisite of our Shoran Kweri Dachi. How many councils are using mayor and cabinet model of governance with a directly elected executive mayor in England and Wales? Is it 15, 17, 13? Apna Apna Amadeh Uttar Parathe Varben, Amadeh TV Corner, PNB at channel IEU.tv. And Apna Apna Shunlana Shunlana Dujan Politician Dir Kastege. तादेव अभिमत एकान सब चीज़ जेटा बोरा कोता शेडल आपने रोबिमत आपना राखियो हबे डिसाइड करवाने डिस यूर चॉइस नॉट लिसनिंग फ्रॉम द पॉलिटिशियन मोर ओल्लेस ऑल पॉलिटिशियंस आर सेम दे स्पीक लॉस दे प्रॉम इज लॉस नाउ व्हिच वन इज गुड फॉर यू इज यू डिसीजन यू विल डिसाइड हाउ यू विल just to deliver the message from the politician and share and make a situation not to defend, not to offend anyone. After Ahmed Shangi Thakben, next program Ahmed Thakben, Ahmed Bai. Assalamualaikum. Yeah.